So I wanted to talk a little bit about politics. Um, I've been posting some videos about 9-11 uh, and Iraq and terrorism and um, foreign policy of the United States and also um, sort of supporting Ron Paul. Um, he got me uh, excited when I saw that debate uh, the second debate, the Republican debate, and um, I really like when uh, truth is spoken to power because it creates this very, um, I mean, it's an awkward situation, but it's also a beautiful situation because not only does the absurdity of, um, of the general system shine as brightly as, as possible because of the stark contrast between, you know, what I consider to be an objective view of the world that, that Ron Paul is trying to, to get. He's just really trying to um, put forth a universal ethic. He's trying to say that, look, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of those that we invade of those that we try to subjugate um, and you know again people argue over the, the, the connotations of these words you know why don't I say liberate because you know officially in the, in the US government legislation and, and, and the, all the military documentation this is the liberation of Iraq not the invasion and occupation um, and, you know, that's a whole nother uh, issue. We can talk about George Orwell next time or something. But, um, I love to see truth spoken of power. But there's always this, this issue in, in politics. Um, well, you know, what's the truth, obviously? There's a battle over, over who has a monopoly on the truth. Um, because with you know, the kind of identity politics that we have. Uh, people identify with a particular worldview and that perspective's truth is the only truth available to them and that's all that they see and anything that falls outside of that uh, perspective is, it's sort of scoffed at or it's called uh, conspiracy theory or, you know, it's called extreme, outrageous, whatever. Um, you know, the theory it goes for some people that every every person is this way when they take a political stance and support a candidate and support an issue and, and anything like that. Because, you know, you're inherently restricted to your worldview. And when you start asserting your worldview into the public sphere, you're just like, you know, going to start ramming into people and butting heads. And, you know, to some extent that's true. But I personally am having issues with this whole distinction between um, opinions and facts when it comes to politics. Because as a human being, I'm in a position where I can't, <clears throat> I can't know things objectively about, about the world. I can only make judgments about it. I can only weigh the evidence of my own experience. And my experience includes, you know, what my eyes see, what my body feels, what I read, what I watch on TV, what I find on the internet. Um, it includes the experience of others to the extent that I can commune with them, that I can read what they've written, you know, etc. So my experience isn't just narrowly defined to my person and the experience of my senses. I mean, I have to read the words with my eyes. But words are powerful. Words structure our whole society. And so if you know the language well, then you can start to see the patterns in, in the, the culture and start to see, you know, what kind of patterns have worked for humans in the past and what kinds haven't worked and why are certain kinds of patterns tried and why are others taboo? And I mean, you build up a pattern and then you make a judgment based on what you perceive to be the reality and you know 
I say I want to get rid of the opinion fact distinction. That doesn't mean I want to say that everybody is always speaking facts or that I'm always speaking facts. No, I'm saying both of these terms are too extreme and we need to find something in between the two. Because when you if you're the if you're the kind of person that says, look, all we can ever have are our own fallible opinions that really represent nothing but our own egotistical desires and uh, projections. And so, typically, that kind of person just remains apathetic about politics and sort of uh, says, you know, it's doomed to destroy the world and there's nothing we can do about it. Because, uh, it's, you know, it's in, this politics is inherently broken somehow. Because, um, you know, if you take that opinion and, and that opinion of the fact that <laughs> there are only opinions, <laughs> then you're going to be apathetic and you're not going to be willing to act in the world. But I think what I'm starting to realize, I was always had an aversion to politics as well because um, I thought it was just inherently corrupt. Uh, I read a lot of Noam Chomsky uh, when I got into college and it really allowed me to understand how, how political power operates and how governmental power operates and how it handles itself around the world and I realized that objectively there's nothing different between um, a, a party in control of, of a government and a, a criminal gang um, because there's no real um, basis to judge who's on the right side and who's on the wrong side of it all just people on planet earth fighting over what we think we need to to live the way we want to live um, so this this opinion fact distinction needs to be brought together somehow because it's too dualistic and it's fractured and people need to be okay with expressing themselves and taking strong stances on things that they feel passionately about. And if they turn out to be wrong, then you have to take it back. And and people should be able to do that too. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean that when you feel that an issue is important that you should uh, refrain from speaking your mind about it and from, you know, really getting involved with pushing it forward. And Because, you know, it's, all, it's true, you could always really fuck up and do something terrible without meaning to. But if you never get involved and, and get motivated, nothing's ever going to change. I mean, nothing's ever going to change if you, if you look at it that way. 